Hello guys and welcome to my review of the Tyranid section of, I think it's Xenos 2? Yeah, Xenos 2 Index. I'm going to be looking at the Tyranids, which if you know, if you follow my channel, is one of my armies. Um, now, when I was running through this, I did feel that there are certain barriers that might make things a bit more complicated than when I normally do a Codex review. So for start, in 8th edition, we just have the power rating... Um, so a Hive Tyrant is power rating 10. There is no points cost next to that. In order to do look at the points cost, you have to look at the back of the, the book. And then in terms of the points cost, it gives you the points cost with no upgrades at all. And then you have to up add the upgrades it comes with. So if, for example, and this is a complete example off the top of my head, so I don't know if this is the case, you know, I'm just saying this off the top of my head, you know, I'm having to look this up. But suppose you had a chaplain... Um, as a you know a random example, it would say in the back of the book it's X amount of points with no upgrades. Then you look at this war gear and it says it's equipped with a power more and bolt pistol. You then have to add the points for a power more and bolt pistol. It's not just built into its you know standards. Uh, I think a bolt pistol is zero points by the way, but you know you know what I'm trying to say like um, it's not just built into its profile. So in terms of talking about the points costs of these units, it's going to be really difficult because I'm going to have to keep flicking back and forth and working out how many, you know, what exactly you're going to equip it with and then you might equip it with something else that changes the points cost. Um, and I find that really kind of quite clunky and counterintuitive. In fact, that's quite a good point to start with because when it comes to reviewing these indexes, I don't like this at all. I think that next to the power ranking, it'd be really good if it had the Hive Tyrant's point cost and then when it says war gear options, it says the model can take tax, you know, Toxin sacks of green or grounds at a cost of you know one point or whatever, so you can just easily work out your points. Um, I guess they're trying to encourage you to use the power rankings. So I said I kind of don't mind the power rankings. I think as a quick reference, you know, we're having a casual game. Power rankings are fine, but really you're going to want to use points costs. That's what most of us are familiar with. That is the fairest way of doing it. Power rankings, obviously, there's uh, it's not as balanced as point rankings. So yeah, I really don't understand why they've done this, and that's going to make things difficult. Also, um, there's a hell of a lot to talk about. So, on a few of the, the the units that I don't really take myself, and I'm not that much of a, you know, there's, there's everyone has those certain units they always take, and they're sort of experts in, and other units in the Codex they've not really been that interested in. I might gloss over a few of those, just for the interest of time, otherwise I'll be here all day. Anyway, um, in terms of the points values then, what I'll do is I'll just talk about the unit, I'll talk about how it works... I'll say whether I like it a lot, and I'll leave points values out of it. So, in theory, you could have a model that was, you know, really, 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 really good, and it's really, really overcosted. Um, but I won't talk about the overcosted parts. This is just sort of the units as they are. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Well, we might talk a little bit about points values at the end, see if there's anything that sort of jumps out at me. But yeah, so bear in mind that points values, we can't, to in the interest of time, in the interest of, you know, um, making the review... Um, we're going to have to sort of gloss over. So it's just a review of the units as written rather than, you know, whether it's sort of worth taking because of the points. Anyway, um, Tyranid special rules. We've got Synapse. Units automatically pass morale tests if they're within eight of a, you know, uh, a Synapse creature, basically. Um, great. The way the morale works in this edition, where you know you're losing extra casualties at the end of your your turn, basically, the fact you don't have to do that, fantastic, really, really good, um, encourages sort of narrative play as well. You know, get your hive tyrant foot slog in, you know, whatever it is, um, have lots of your little bugs around them, and there's other bonuses for taking big hordes of big bugs. Sorry, big hordes of little bugs, um, and yeah. Make them all fearless, essentially. They automatically pass morale tests. Like it. Only one problem. Eight inches. Seems a bit small. Am I the only one who thinks that? You know, I think it could be minimum 12. Should be a bit bigger, I think. But yeah, encourage you to take more synapse creatures and make everything fearless around it. Um, instinctive behavior. Uh, a unit with this ability is within range of a synapse creature. Of So unless it's in within range of a synapse creature of a friendly, and it says high fleet, my high fleet is called high fleet kaiju, so I say high fleet kaiju units. It can or Leviathan or Kraken or whatever high fleet you feel is. It can only target the nearest visible unit if it shoots, and if it charges, only declare charge against the nearest visible enemy unit. This is good. 
Um, well, it's not good, but it's it's an improvement on how it used to be. So the way that instinctive behavior used to work was there was three different categories. There was lurk, feed, and um, hunt. If I want to say hunt. And each um, different tyranids had, you know, different things. So um, carnifexes and hormigaunts, their instinctive behavior was to feed. Uh, and then the like something like a lictor its instinctive behavior was to lurk something like that and they each had a different table and it was like if you rolled badly bad things would happen like you had cannibalistic hunger where your men would attack themselves and if you're a six good things happened they've thrown all of that crap out and it's now just you have to charge towards the nearest nearest unit or shoot the nearest unit which is annoying because you know obviously you don't want that you want the flexibility to be able to charge what you want or shoot what you want so they've made instinctive behavior something you want to avoid which is great um, it's now you don't take a leadership check or anything, you just do it. Um, so it encourages you to use your synapse creatures to allow that flexibility. Equally, if it happens, it's just the penalty if you have to charge and shoot the nearest thing. Um, which is so much better than having to look up the table and roll on the table and bogging down the game. So, in terms of it, yeah, you now don't get the roll, you always just suffer from instinctive behaviour if you're not near a synapse creature. But they've also made it much better in terms of, um... You don't have to run the table, which makes the games quicker. Also, while it is definitely something you want to avoid, you know, having to shoot and charge the nearest thing if, you, if you're if you going to, um, it's also something you can sort of get around. You know, it says um, it can only target the nearest uh, visible enemy unit if it shoots, and it can only charge in the nearest visible enemy unit. It doesn't say anything about movement. It, I'd read it entirely. Unless a high fleet unit, and it says high fleet as in the keyword, um, with this ability is within range of a synapse creature see above of any friendly high free uh, units it can only target the nearest you know it doesn't say anything about like movement so i reckon there's a sort of way of getting around that where you can sort of move your units towards the thing you want to shoot really um or the thing you want to charge really um a lot of the time you'll want to charge the nearest thing anyway because you know if you're trying to get a charge off you don't want to charge the thing that's 12 inches away you want to charge the thing that's five inches away just to get your charge off um so yeah, it's definitely um, much more manageable. So that's a buff there. Shell in the Warp. Enemy psychers must subtract one from any psychic test they make if they are within eight of any units within with this ability. Uh, Tyrion psychers are not affected. So that's Shadow in the Warp. Um, bit weak. Um, it makes it more difficult for them to get powers off, which is nice. But it's only one from their roll. So, essentially, it's making their, their powers one more difficult to get off. So, if they've got a warp charge 6 power, they need to get a 6 off 2 dice. They now need to get a 7, because they're subtracting 1 off their rolls. It's okay. The problem with it is, again, only an 8-inch bubble. It seems really small to me. Um, if it was 12 inches, okay. If you could, if it was more than 12 inches, sure. Because that being, you know, a big bubble of, you know, making it more difficult for them to get powers off. But... Yeah, it doesn't seem too too big a deal for me. Um, I guess if there's a quite a strong sort of power. I guess as well, it would also help you denying the witch. Because it just says they must subtract one from their tests. Um, so does that mean when you deny the witch, you roll and see if you get higher? If they roll a six, it becomes a five. But if you roll a six, it counts as you got denied the witch. Because um, you're one higher than them. Possibly. Possibly. So yeah, it's alright. I just think the, the it's good. The only problem with it is it's an 8-inch bubble. But hey, tell you what you can get. And finally, Discipline of the Hive Mind, which is three psychic powers. You can choose which ones you want, which automatically makes um, the powers better, because now you can just choose. The Horror has a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select a unit of in 24 that is visible to the Psyker. Until the start of your next psychic phase, that unit must subtract 1 from their hit rolls and their leadership characteristic. That's really good. So, for a start, you've got, um, you know, suppose you hit, you cast it on a unit of Space Marines uh, with Laz Cannons that are going to, you know, really mess up your monstrous creature. Now, they're hitting you on fours instead of threes. Then you charge into combat. It doesn't say their rolls to hit for shooting. It just says their rolls to hit. It says their hit rolls. Um, you roll into combat. They would be hitting you on threes. They're now hitting you on fours. So, it does both, which is really good. Also, um... Subtracting from their leadership characteristic, which means if they're going to lose men, they're going to lose an extra man when it comes to the morale phase. So, pretty good power. Does a lot of things, you know. Um, yeah, I like it. Catalyst. 
Catalyst essentially gives them feel no pain. Uh, says uh, warp charge six, friendly tyranid unit of in eighteen. Uh, on a roll of a d6, roll of a 5 or 6, it does not lose a wound when they lose a wound. So yeah, feel no pain. Really good power. Um, definitely, definitely nothing wrong with that, you know. Go out and feel no pain. Um, in the old edition, it was... Um, it gave you, you feel no pain and something else. This is just casting on the unit. But yeah, no solid power, no, no argument there. Onslaught has a warp charge of 6. If manifested, select a tyranid unit of an 18 of the Psyker. That unit can advance and shoot this turn without suffering any penalties to ballistic skill for moving and shooting, heavy weapons, uh, or advancing and shooting assault weapons. In addition, that unit can also charge that turn. So the main application I see there is the idea that it, you don't get the penalties to your ballistic skill. Uh, well, you know, that there are some good DACA builds for Tyranids. One that's really been nerfed is the Twin Link Devourers. That's, you know, not as viable anymore. Um, so, yeah, that is viable. The main one I read there is you can uh, advance an assault, which is good. Uh, certain, I think, Gene Sealers can do that anyway, which we'll come to in a second. But, yeah, the idea that, you know, your, your Hive Tyrant, uh, if you casted it on himself... Um, he can move nine inches if he's foot slogging, but then you advance on that, and suppose you roll a six, let's say, on your advance. He moves 15 inches and then can assault. Pretty good, basically. Um, so yeah, I think all of those psychic powers are good. Um, not sure what my pick of the litter would be. Um, yeah, good powers. Happy. Um, and that covers the sort of special rules and psychic powers. So in summary, synapse and instinctive behavior, nice and narrative, nice and fluffy, uh, encourages you to sort of bunch up. There are no template weapons anymore, which will help you out. Um, Shadow and the Warp's good, but small range. I think they could have been done, done with increasing the range. I like the psychic powers. All of them seem pretty viable, and they're made better by the fact you can just choose them now. So without further ado, let's look at the Hive Tyrant. So at his highest level... Uh, of wounds um he is movement nine which is awesome really really love that um makes him quicker you know nine inches makes such a difference especially if like i said if you're running and then assaulting with that psychic power um his weapon skill he always hits on twos which is awesome because before to hit on a you know you couldn't hit on a two could you or was it you had to be more than double their weapon skill most of the time you hit on threes because he was like a really high weapon skill but even then i think to yeah, I think it was like, did did the chart, I can't even remember, it's been a while since I played, it either went the lowest you could get, even if you're weapon skill 10 or weapon skill 1, you'd hit on 3s, or I think it was, if it was, yeah, yeah, I think you only hit on 3s, that was as low as it went, so now he hits on 2s all the time against no matter what, and if he charges he's hitting first because the buff to assault. Still ballistic skill 3, which is great, um, when they eventually fix Twin Link Devourers, when we get our own codex, or if they FAQ it, you know, Daka tyrants flying around, you know, Really good. Still strength 6. Till, still T6. 10 wounds now, which is obviously amazing. But then everything has seen a buff in wounds. So, you know, you have to act that in. Only 5 attacks. I think that's one more than he used to be. Uh, which is slightly disappointing. Especially as you don't get a bonus attack for charging. And weapons don't really give you a bonus attack anymore. Except a few exceptions which I'll talk about. Um, but yeah. Still strength 6. Monstrous creature. Um, and he's got some good weapons you can give him as well. Leadership 10, you know, and he's got that synapse ability, which is great. And a free up safe. Um, in terms of, he's got a, as he takes damage, it can reduce it. So if he's reduced to uh, five wounds, half wounds, he can only move seven. He hits on freeze, you know, things like that. Don't really want to talk about that. I've already said in my review of 8th edition, I don't like this. I don't like the fact that as you lose wounds, you get weaker. The reason being, I think it's cool. I think it's narrative. It's fluffy. I like it in theory. The problem is it means you have to keep looking at tables, remembering, oh wait, he can only move seven now. I forgot about that because he's down to five with oh wait, when is it down is he's down to three or is it it's down to two that he then moves five? Do you know what I mean? Having to keep consulting the table is a bit annoying. He comes with two pairs of monstrous scything talons. Monstrous scything talons are beast. I really like the fact that just now just scything talons are good. The way they work is they are strength user, which is fair enough, because most monstrous creatures are strong anyway. Then minus three to your save, which is awesome. You know, that means that if you think about it of going against a Terminator, that means a Terminator only gets a five up save. They have a five up in one anyway. So it's like stripping saves of Terminators, basically. 
and it does d3 damage. So if you get five hits and you inflict five five unsaved wounds, which is, you know, admittedly unlikely, but then you're hitting on twos, so the fact he's not got massive, you know, huge amounts of attacks is kind of, you know, mitigated by the fact he's hitting on twos. Each one of those would do three damage, so you can maximum put out 15 damage a turn. Um, obviously, that requires all of them to hit, all of them to wound, all of them to be unsaved. Not massively likely, but against something, yeah, 15 damage. So imagine against that, against a tank, that'll just wreck it. Um, if that was against infantry, that'd only be five men dead, but very dead indeed. Um, but yeah, pretty, you know, looks pretty good in combat. Also, you can re-roll rolls of one when attacking with this weapon. If the bearer has more than one pair of monstrous scything talents, it can make one additional attack with this weapon each time it fights. So that gives you essentially six attacks. Awesome. Um, also, you're rerolling ones. So six attacks, hitting on twos, rerolling ones. Does D does not just D three damage, just does three damage minus future save. Monstrous scything talent seem beast, especially on this guy. He was a bit of an animal. Um, you also have a. Uh, a pincer tail um, and it is strength user does d3 damage um, doesn't do anything to the save each time the bearer fights uh, one and only one of its attacks must be made with this weapon so if you take an extra attack um, with your, your monstrous scything talons you'd have six attacks in total but one of them would have to be with your tail five attacks with your, your scything talons um, Fair enough. The way that, if you, coincidentally, if you're wondering, the way weapons work now um, is if you have, let's say, a power sword and a power axe. You've got one in either hand. Um, and you've got five attacks as your stat line. Now, having extra weapons doesn't give you bonus attacks. Unless it's something like a chain sword or, yeah, these scything talons do it as well. Um, but what happens is you choose what you're using. So you can say, I'm going to use all five of my attacks, I'm going to use my power sword this time. Or you can say, all five of my attacks, I'm going to use my power axe this time. But you can also split it. So you can say, I'm going to do two attacks on my power axe, three to the power sword. The way this works is you have to pick one and only one with the tail. But in uh, for future reference, you know, if you had scything talons uh, and uh, rending claws, you can opt which one you want to use. Yeah, or you can say I'm going to use two of one, two of the other. Um, it doesn't give you like some amazing stat line, like oh yeah, the weapon stat lines combined, so it's AP three and plus two straight, or you know whatever it is. Um, yeah, I think I made that clear. You've got the options to replace your monstrous scything talons with bio cannons or monstrous bio weapons, which is good. So you can you know, and you can do both. You can give them two sets of monstrous bio cannons or two sets of you know other things i'll talk about those towards the end but as i said just as standard he's pretty good you can give him wings to make him fly and then he moves 16 inches and there's no penalties for um any of that now so now he can just move 16 inches then assault in fact what you can do it uh, doesn't say anything about you can't advance so you can move 16 inches with your hive tyrant uh, if you cast uh, onslaught on him um roll run six inches or advanced six inches as it's called in this edition, then assault 2d6. So he's got incredible range of wings. I think wings is still incredibly viable. Um, it's a shame it doesn't give you hard to hit or anything like that anymore. But yeah, makes him an absolute animal when it comes to movement. You know, you can stick him up a front and just use him as a massive sort of distraction can't effect, charge him at the units. Um, you know, take him on then. Go on, try and to bring him down because if you can't take him down, he'll be on you. Or, you know... First turn charges, there's nothing against that in this edition. If you fit, if you think about it as um, 24 inches away, you know, uh, from the nearest unit is often how far away you are. He moves 16, onslaught, he runs, let's say, only 3 inches. He's gone 18, um, well, no, sorry, 19, and then he can assault, you know, on average 7 inches. Um, he's going to be in, very likely he's going to be in. So, yeah, um, wings, really like it. Um Toxin sacs and adrenal glands. Um, let's remind ourselves what they do. I think uh, adrenal glands. Um, what do toxin sacs and adrenal glands do? Toxin sacs. What they do is they. Um, any wound of a six in the fight phase. Uh, with model causes an addition one additional damage that's pretty good 
that's pretty good. Um, how much are sort of toxin sacks? I think they're cheap. Um, sorry, you'll have to bear with me, guys. This is not laid out very nicely for looking these things up. Um, toxin sacks, they're two points per Hormagorn, but for a Hive Tyrant, they're only one point. I would say that's worth it. You know, you are only sixes with your monstrous serving talents. They're causing four damage. That's really brutal. You know, uh, just one unsaved wound goes through on a vehicle in close combat. Just one does four damage off it. That's pretty good. Um, adrenal glands add one to the distance it can move when it advances or charges. So the way charges work, now you don't have to be in base contact. You just have to be within one inch of the enemy. Um, so if you've got a seven inch charge, that's effectively you need a six inch charge. And if you add those, it becomes a five inch charge. So that's making those distances really nice. So toxin sacs and adrenal glands are good in this edition. He has Shadow in the Warp and Synapse. He has the Will of the Hive Mind, which means uh, his Synapse range is 12, which is great. It encourages you to use them as those linchpin sort of Synapse creatures. I definitely want to get a Foot Slogging Tyrant now. Um, I think the fact that um, they have, um, you know, better movement and the fact the way Synapse works in this edition, I can see it being viable. Um, one thing I like about this book is I think it encourages that sort of narrative play of sort of big squads of... Uh, guys and sort of the big monsters in amongst them you can do an all horde list you can do an all monstrous creature list sure but at the same time i, I think that what's going to work well in this edition is sort of a, a mix of both i'm seeing some really good combos already i like this book a lot um death rose basically is like it exploding you know um you know units within six d3 war wounds fine that's that's good it means that if he's in combat with a unit and he dies and his death rose he can take stuff out although it it just says if he's reduced to zero, so if he gets shot and he's in the middle of your horde, that'll be something to watch out for. And best of all, a hive turret has a five up in bond save. Hallelujah. I want to get down on my knees and pray to Jesus for thank you, God. That is so, so awesome. Um, one of the problems you had with hive tyrants was yeah, they had a free up save, but you know, you shoot a missile launcher at it. AP3 in the old edition, uh, and he loses his save and it's wounding, like, you know, not very difficultly. Um, yeah, it wasn't wasn't really ideal. Now at least he's got a f at least he's got an inbomb save, and you can augment that with various other things as well, like you know, giving him a good cover save um, with um, you know venom tropes or something near him. And yeah, I think that's gonna make a big difference. And it's just it's not just in combat; it's just an inbomb save. So yeah, only a five up, but still really good. It'll help you out against those high strength, you know, massive things that are gonna really wreck his save. Uh, he's a psycho and he can do psych two psychic powers, as we've talked about. Psychic powers are good. So yeah, Hive Tyrant, great. Uh, Swarm Lord. Swarm Lord is a foot slog in Hive Tyrant. He can't take wings. Uh, he's got Bone Sabers. Bone Sabers are freaking awesome on the Hive Tyrant because they're minus three to your save like your monstrous Scything Talons. But unlike the monstrous Scything Talons that do three damage, they do D6 damage. So you can imagine if you roll for the damage on those and you get a couple of sixes, you know, suppose suppose you just but you know, the high the um the Swarm Lord has seven attacks. Suppose you miss with half of them, even though he's hitting on twos. Suppose you only get three, you miss with over half of them. Suppose two of those actually get past your save, even though it's minus three to whatever a save it is. That's still D6 damage. That's a potential of 12 damage off just two. And that's a pretty poor roll. Immediately, you could roll double one for that and just do two damage. But yeah, a potential of 12 off just two dice. It's, it's really good. Really good. Um, I think I kind of like the idea of that. Um, the just doing three damage. Because that's just consistent. But yeah, you know, you roll up high. You roll a couple of fives and sixes on your damage rolls. Yeah, you could easily, you know, rack up. You know, can you imagine if all seven hits go through... All seven, you inflict seven wounds, uh, but then each one of those seven wounds does D6 damage, you know, mental, mental, you know, for a potential of five times six is uh, 30, 42 damage, potentially, not very likely you'll do that, but yeah, that's mad, um, really good with the bone sabers, uh, and he's got his tail as well, which, uh, yeah, fitly that means you're only attacking six times with the bone sabers, because one of the times you have to use your tail. In terms of his stat line, he's a jumped up Hive Tyrant, um, pretty much the same. He has 12 wounds, which is fantastic. Um, he has strength 8, which is even more potent. And he has 7 attacks, which is also great. Shut in the Warp Synapse, as we've said. Has a 5 up Invon save, as we've said. 
uh, blade parry. Add one to invulnerable save against wounds called in melee. So in melee, he's now the rockinized animal, the Swarm Lord. As I said, massive amounts of attacks. Bone Sabers do a load of damage. He's really strong as well. Stronger than a regular type tyrant. And he gets a 4-up in one save in melee. This guy is going to be scary. Uh, I said I wouldn't talk about points values. But one thing to factor in is he is like 300 points. Um, but then, you know, we all points of all points in this edition have changed around. You know, if you look at the way Space Marines points have changed, um, you know, it's, it's massively different. So, talking about points values at this point, while it's difficult because I have to go back... Um, it's also not really that useful because we don't know how... It's going to take a while when we've played this edition for a while. we figured out how points edition change. Maybe in this edition, 300 points for a really good unit like a Swarm Lord is actually not that expensive because of the way points values have changed. Maybe in this edition it's really over-costed. We're going to have to see. We're going to have to look at other armies. At this stage, you know, we'll wait. Hive Commander. In your shooting phase, you can pick a friendly unit within, tw uh, within six of the Swarm Lord. Um, that unit can move and advance if you if you wish, as if it were the movement phase instead of shooting. Um, that's pretty good. So, suppose you've got a unit of uh, Gene Stealers. Gene Stealers now move eight. They move um, eight inches and then uh, with an advance in their movement phase. In the shooting phase, you say do the same thing again. So they go minimum of sixteen. Um, well, minimum of uh, uh, eighteen actually if they roll double ones for their their run. You know, maximum something silly. So that's that's quite good if you really need to get across the board quickly. Um, I can see that being useful. Uh, we have the hive mind we talked about. Yep, tw uh, twelve inch um, synapse and death throws. He also has psychic powers as we've discussed. So swarm lord, bit of an animal in close combat. Again, it remains to be seen um, how effective they're going to be at getting across the board. Because that was always the problem with the tyranid monster creatures. Yes, a tooled up swarm lord was good in close combat. Yes, he's still good in close combat. Can we get him across the board? Well, now they have a 5 up on save uh, for both the regular Hive Titan and the Swarm Lord, possibly. Um, it remains to be seen. But yeah, I do think both of them have gotten better. Even if they have nerfed the Daka, Daka Tyrants with the Twinling Devourers. Old One-Eye, he is a um, HQ choice as a Carnifex, and he does some, some cool stuff, you know, um, Alpha Leader regeneration stuff like that berserker rage he's got some cool stuff i don't really play old one eye so i'm not going to talk about him brood lords this is one i do have a couple of brood lords and i've got actually got a lot of gene stealers which i've never really used that much because they're kind of rubbish now gene stealers are amazing so brood lord they now move eight fantastic even quicker um well much quicker before they were moving six like everything else now they move eight which is brilliant um they hit he hits on twos awesome um, as I said, hitting on twos now is a really big deal because before it was not very likely that you would ever hit on twos. Most of the time you hit on threes. Or I think, I, I, I can't remember, could you ever hit on twos in the old edition? I have a feeling even if you were, it was like, if you had a higher weapon skill uh, than something, if they were hitting you, they were hitting you on fours, you had to have more than double. So you, if something was weapon skill four, you needed to be weapon skill nine for them to hit you on fives. Now you're just hitting everyone on twos because you're a brood lord. Great. Strength five, good. T five good six wounds really big jump there that's good um or is it i think um four before or is it five can't remember um six attacks fantastic um ld10 four up save really good start line for the brood lord he has monster trending claws which are also awesome they are minus three to a save as i said anything that's minus three to a save is really good because you're against terminators you're putting them up to a five up save which is the same as their uh, invulnerable save so that's how i look at you know that that change that's really really good um, you re-roll uh, failed rune rolls when attacking with this weapon. In addition, each time you make a wound of a 6, um, it is minus 6 um, of AP and damage of 3. So really, really brutal. You're re-rolling wounds, and as I said, um, you know, your, t your strength 5, so that really helps. You're hitting on 2s, um, hitting on 2s and re-rolling your wounds. Nice. Um, if you roll a 6, it's minus 6 to its save, which means it basically removes saves, except in vulnerables, and it's damage of 3. But normally they do damage of D3, which is good anyway. So he's brutal. He's a synapse creature. He has sa shadow in the warp, which is good. Uh, before, they weren't synapse creatures. They had psychic abilities, they weren't synapse. Now they are. 
Lightning reflexes has a five up in von save, which is so that guys um, just camera had to be reset. Um, yeah, this guy's an absolute animal in close combat, but not only is he an animal in close combat, which gene stealers were always good in close combat. Now he's so much better at getting into combat because for a start, you can move eight. You can then go potentially six inches. So a 15 inch move, then a assault a sort um, 2d6. So uh, potentially a 12 inch charge, but bear in mind a 12 inch charge, not even 11, not a 12 because of, you know, needing to be given one. So getting across the board is much easier. And he has a five up in von save. So he's going to be much more survivable as well. And these things, I'm talking about Gene Stealers in general. But yeah, Gene Stealers, massive, massive boost. You can add one to hit rolls in the fight phase for high fleet Gene Stealers within, um, within six. So Gene Stealers, I think Gene Stealers normally hit on threes. Let's double check that. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. What are Gene Stealers? Where are you, Gene Stealers? Just going for all the elites now. Lots of elites. Where are troops? Oh, they're troops. Where are my gene stealers? Gene stealers, there we go. Hiding in plain sight just on the other page. Um, they normally hit on threes. Now, if you've got a broodlord running around with them, they hit on twos. Nice. And he can't be... Broodlord can't be targeted because uh, he's, you know, got less than a certain number of wounds. So you can just hang around with them, buffing them. You know, really good stuff. Tyranid Prime, not too much to say. He's basically a souped-up warrior. Um, and he has Shadow in the Warp and Synapse, as he did before. And he adds one to hit rolls for all high fleet, whatever your high free is, to Tyranid Warriors. And Shrikes that have been six. Um, yeah, good. So this is good for their shooting. So if you have um, your warriors kitted out for shooting... If you have your warriors kitted out for shooting, as I was saying, um, then make them better at shooting. In combat, warriors, they normally hit on a three, makes them hit on twos. So he's good. He's a good little addition there. I'm not sure what he costs, points cost. But going off, um, going off, I'm looking at all of the other power points uh, or power values or whatever they're called. He's only five. That's the lowest I can see in the HQ session. So I'm guessing a Tyranny Prime is quite cheap. And he does a nice little bonus to your Warriors. Um, Turvagon. So, stat line is a bit of a monster. Um, not in terms of combat. You know, he's strength seven. He hits on fours. He's only got three attacks. Not particularly great. What he does have uh, is 14 wounds, T8, and a free up save. So, quite survivable. But... That's not really what you take the Turbagon for. You don't really take your Turbagon for its shooting or its fighting. You take it to spawn things. The way it now works um, is you can re-roll hit rolls of a 1 in the shooting phase for all Turbagons within 6. So he buffs Turbagons around him. Um, in fact, I will double check. I think Turbagons... Yeah, so if you take 20 uh, or more models in a Turbagon brew, they re-roll wounds um, of a 1... He means they reroll hits of a one. So if you've got twenty plus um, Termagons near a Turvagon, uh, they're rerolling ones uh, in the shooting phase to hit, and they're rerolling ones to wound when they're shooting. So that's that's pretty good. So an active backlash again sucks if he dies. They take some you know mortal wounds. I'm guessing yeah um, around him, but that was the same as before, or it might have been got better or worse in terms of how brutal it is but yeah it's not not a good thing so if he dies you know he's going to affect things around him spawning termagons has changed so the big change comes from the match or the main rule book um and essentially um now you don't they're not free you have to cost in how much the termagons cost in your points value so you have to have you know if you're running a 2000 point list and to sp you want to spawn 10 Termagants and they're going to be spawned in. You now have to pay whatever that point cost is in your th in your um, army list. So that kind of sucks. They're not giving you free units. What is good is it just says at the end of your movement phase, a Termagon can spawn Termagants. If it does so, add a new unit of 10 Hormagons to your army and set it up on the battlefield. So it's wholly within six of the Termagon, no more than one from the enemy. All of these are armed with Flesh Borers, yada, yada, yada. So now they just you just choose when it happens. You just go, actually, I'll have those 10 um, Termagons that I said I'm going to spawn. They just appear. So essentially, the way I would view it is I would say that those Termagons, it's more like the Termagon is a transport for them. You know, they can just pop out at any time. 
Um, there's no penalty for it. You've paid the points for them. So I don't really do Turvagaunts. I don't own one. I've never fielded one. Uh, it doesn't... That style of play of spawning stuff in never really appealed to me. So in terms of it, I don't really know um, if that's better or worse. I would suggest perhaps it's got worse because now you're not, you know, spawning, you know potentially turn off the turn of more more gaunts but at the same time you're now you can just do it whenever you want like i said it's more like they're a transport so what you can do is you know just at a strategic time go aha let's have 10 extra turn um 10 extra gaunts you know um just appear if you want like a transport um i don't i think that's probably a nerf to be honest because now you're paying points for them but yeah i don't know i never really fielded them so Tyranid Warriors, they are much the same as ever. Movement 6, uh, they hit on 3s, which they were most of the time before because they're weapon skill 5. They wound on 4s, which is... Uh, sorry, they hit on 4s and shooting, which is the same as it was before. Strength 4, T4, 3 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9, so what I say. I think that's like basically an identical stat line. They have a Devourer and a pair of Sliving Talons. Um, Sliving Talons, non the, the more monstrous ones, they're just damage 1, AP dash... But you can reroll ones of a hit when attacking this weapon, which is good. That's how it used to be back in the uh, Codex before the 6th edition one, which is the most recent one. Um, if the bearer has more than one pairs of Tithing Talons, it can make one additional attack. So if you replace his Devourer with a, two sets of Sliving Talons, he gets four attacks and rerolling ones. No AP. That's fair enough. You can give him stuff like Lash Whips, Bone Swords, that sort of thing. You know, it says it can replace it from the basic bioweapons list. Um... Question, question for you guys. Um, if you go to the Tyranid War Gear, um, what you have, or the Tyranid points cost, it says units, uh, different units, ranged weapons, melee weapons, um, other well, war gear, and then it says Tyranid War Gear, Tyranid range weapons, Tyranid melee weapons, other war gear, that's the, in terms of what they do, and that's it. But it says stuff like, you can replace it with the monstrous biocannon list. There isn't one. There isn't a section. Question? Is that just... Is it that because, um, on like a Venom Cannon Forever, where we say monstrous Venom Cannon, is that what it means? But there is no list that says monstrous biocannons. Is that a typo? Is it made clearer when you look at it? Help me out in the comments. Um, Gene Stealers. I won't talk about too much, but yeah, they are really good. Um, like I said, you can advance and move and then assault. So you could potentially go 15 inches, then assault, and assaulting's better now. Um, they're always hit, they get their assault off. If you've got a, um, a brood lord near them, they hit on twos. Uh, strength 4, T4, wound 1, free attacks. Um, yep, they have rending claws, which are, if you've got a 6, it's, um, they're resolved at AP minus 4. Normally they're AP minus 1. Um, Scything talons, you can roll hit rolls of one when attacking this weapon. So the fact they have, um, no, they're just armed rending claws. But I'm guessing scything. Yeah, you can also give them a pair of scything talons. Probably not really worth it. I would say, depending on, I don't know what the points cost is to give them scything talons, but it's probably not particularly worth it. Because if you give them scything talons, yes, the advantage is if you attack with them, you'll get an extra attack. No, you won't, because you're only taking one pair. Uh, but you'll get to reroll ones, so they'll get three attacks rerolling ones. That's probably good against stuff like quite bad stuff, like stuff with, you know, not very good armor saves. Yes, admittedly. If you get rending claws, can be good most of the time. It's minus one, so the units save. And on a six, it completely basically removes their armor save at minus four, pretty much, most of the time. Um, they now have a five of one save, which I've talked about. And the only other thing is, if you have uh, a unit when there's 10 or more models, they get three attacks. Um, four attacks instead of three, rather. So, four attacks, you're ending claws. Minus one to your save. Um, hit on twos, you got your... They're pretty good. They're pretty good. Again, the main caveat, I would say, is it remains to be... They've definitely gotten better, no doubt. The main And the assault has gotten better, and they're assault units, so you'd think they're a lot better in this edition. The main thing I'd say, though, is it remains to be seen. Because the problem with Tyranids was never that Tyranids were bad in the Assault. If you got a unit of Gene Stealers from the last edition in the Assault, they would be good. If you got a unit of, you know, whatever 
from the Tyranid Codex. In they were generally good in the assault. Admittedly, some of the big monstrous creatures that hit on fours weren't very good. They're kind of useless. They didn't have many attacks. But a lot of the stuff the Tyranids had was good if you got it into the assault. The problem was getting into the assault because they would just be shot to ribbons by Tal broadsides so they could get anywhere near it. Now these guys, you factor in that they can move eight, they can chart, they got a five up in one save to make them more survivable. They can, uh, you know, advance then assault. Hopefully this helps them get them in. Termagants, same as always, uh, movement 6, hitting on 4s, fours, 4s, fours, uh, strength 3, T3, with 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 5, 6 up save, same as ever, flesh borers, same as ever, um, if you're going to upgrade them, I'd say devourers are the best one, depending on points, again, I haven't looked at points, um, I'm not sure if they're cheaper or more expensive, but yeah, give them a sort 3, 18 inch range, flesh borers just a sort 1, um, you know, 12 range, don't really see the point of the spike rifle, don't really see the point of, um, strangle web really spine fist is like a pistol so you can shoot it in close combat but it's kind of weak and they're not very good in close combat so yeah devourer off keep them as flesh borer keep them cheap if you want to upgrade them make them devourer gaunts i would say um instinct yeah nothing new as i said if you take them in squads of 20 or more they reroll wounds and that can be good if you've got a turvagon um near them as well but yeah they are basically the same as ever Hormagons. Hormagons, uh, I would say, have gotten better. So, for example, they now move eight. Before, you had a bounding leap, which meant you could... Um, how did bounding leap work again? Anyway, bounding leap meant they move further, but you had to roll for it? Why can't I remember what bounding leap did? It was like... The bounding leap was they ran, but they always you always added it was like the lowest they could run was like a four or something they always run it like or like i can't remember anyway but yeah now now they just go eight inches in the movement phase, phase which is good stat line basically the same as ever you know two attacks yeah um they have a pair of sliding talents they reroll ones so they get less attacks now only two each they won't be getting you know uh three on the charge but at the same time, they do reroll ones now. They will always hit first as well if they charge. Um, so, you know, I don't know if they've got necessarily better or worse, but I do like the fact they now move eight. Also, they have bounding leap has changed. Like I said, I can't remember. I think it was doing run moves before. Now when they consolidate, uh, it can move up to six. Oh, sorry. When it piles in and consolidates. That's really good. Because all it says now in terms of how you fight is you just have to move one guy within... An inch of the enemy so if you get them in a big conga line and one guy gets within one inch that unit they're now in combat basically then you can then you can pile in six inches and then at the end you can consolidate just six so you consolidate six off that's pretty good pretty good um if it's got 20 or more models euro rolls of a one when fighting so if you take them in a squad of 20 or more um, which, like I said, there's lots of bonuses for taking bigger squads, which is good to see, because it encourages that narrative play of big swarms. Um, and there's no pie plates anymore, so you're not going to get blown up just by a template or a flamer. Um, flamers are really good, but yeah, they don't work in the, the same way. You don't have that template on you. Um, 20 or more, you can now um, re-roll rolls of 1 when hitting with your Scything Talons. And then if there's 20 of you, re-roll rolls of 1 to wound. So, they're okay, Hormagaunts. They, I, again, it would depend how cheap they are. Because they're pretty, you know, if you get into combat, they're hitting on fours. They're probably going to be wounding on not particularly very good. Um, strength three, so fives a lot of the time. Yeah. You can take Toxin Sacks and Adrenal Glands. Not necessarily going to work too well with them. Um, so they're not particularly great, but at the same time, at least, you know, they're going to be speedy and they're good fodder. And, you know, they're basically the same as always. Ripper Swarms I never bother with. Tyrant Guards basically working very similar. Um, I think they've been nerfed slightly. They're only T5 now. I think they were T6 before. Free Wounds, you'd, I'd like to have seen that increased more. Um, the only thing they've got is Shield Wall. Uh, roll a uh, dice each time a friendly uh, you know, Hive Tyrant loses a wound if they're within three. On a 2+, plus, they intercept it. So, you can put these guys around the Hive Tyrant. They only move 7 inches, though. So, you kind of have to keep them in tow. But the enemy can target Hive Tyrants because they have enough wounds. But on a 2+, plus, you can just take the wounds in your ty Tyrant Guard. 
so they take extra hits to them. Also, they are now... I don't know if they were before, but in terms of their... Um, they're, they're armed with rending claws and scything talons, which we talked about are good. Uh, you can give them crushing claws, and then they are strength 10, minus 3 to your save, um, and D3. So that's pretty good. Hive Guard uh, are good, I think. Again, I never take Hive Guard. They move 5, that's changed. They hit on threes, which is the main thing. They are sort of shooting based. You don't need line of sight. The enemy doesn't get benefits of cover. Um, but they're heavy two, strength eight, minus two to your save, and do D3 damage, which sounds pretty decent to me. Again, I think they will live and die on how expensive they are. Um, if they are quite cheap, that sounds pretty good to me. If they're really expensive, it's like, wow, you know, they never really appeal to me. Um Lictors. Lictors are probably my favourite unit in the whole Tyranid ever. Like those one of the main reasons I started playing. Not because they're good, but because they look cool. I love the fluff, I love the idea behind them. I would say they've got neither better nor worse. I think it's kind of I don't know, I think it remains the the jury's out essentially. So in terms of it, their power ranking two, I'm not sure that equates to in points cost, but that's very low, so I'm guessing they're a low points cost. Um, you now don't take them in broods. They're just a lictor on their own, which is weird, but okay. Um, they can move nine, which is awesome. Really, really good. They hit on twos, which is great. Ballistic skill four, but who really cares? Strength six still. That's good. T4 still. They're now four wounds instead of three, but again, most things have seen a boost in wounds. Three attacks. Disappointing. Really disappointing. I really wanted to see an increase in their attacks. They only got three attacks, which is going to hold them back a lot. Five up save, but it's mitigated by other things. Um, flesh hooks, which have now basically worked like pistols, which is cool, and they're strength user. So strength six pistols, which can fire in close combat, which is good. You know, if, if it's they're in, they're within one one inch and they're you know in in combat, they can fire. That is, they don't get to fire it as like an extra attack or anything. Grasping talons um, and rending claws. So basically, in terms of it, you want to use your Grasping Talons if you get in combat with something like a vehicle or multi-wound things. Because they are the same as Rending Claws, uh, except they do two damage. Rending Claws you want to use against stuff like uh, basically everything else. Because they have the same profile of minus one to your save. They only do one damage, but on a six, they are minus four to your save. So against Terminators, you probably want to bring out the Rending Claws. Against like a orc truck, which you know doesn't have much of an armor save. If you want to do two damage, you can use your grasping talons. Um, disappointing the amount of attacks you get, they're only three. Um, instinctive behavior, sure. Chameleon skin means subtract one um, to their hit rolls when attacking it, which is what I talked about with the idea of why isn't that an invulnerable save if the uh, genes does have an invulnerable save, make it consistent. You add two to the saving throws for this model when it's in cover. So yeah, a five up save, but it is augmented by the fact that if you're in cover, it will become a three up. So, eh, not, not ideal. But oh well, at least they got a nine, nine inch move now, which makes them quick. Uh, during deployment, you can set up a lictor in, in hiding. This is uh, called Hidden Hunters. Instead of placing it on the battlefield uh, at the end of the enemy movement phase, but it can spring from its hiding place, set it up anywhere from 9 inches away. So just like the, the standard deep, uh, deep strike rule, you can reroll Lictor's charge distance in the turn in which it uses this ability. That's now made them better. Because now, rather than just deep strike, uh, you pop them up. They don't, well, they didn't scatter anything before. They just appear 9 inches away. Bear in mind, you only need 8 inches to get into combat. And you get to reroll it. So you can reroll your charge. Okay, another question. When it says you can re-roll charge distance, does that mean that you roll two dice and suppose you roll a six and a one, you can go, I'm going to re-roll the charge distance, I'm going to keep the six and re-roll the one, or does that mean you have to re-roll both dice? Answers in the comments, because um, it's not clear. It just says you can re-roll the Lictus charge distance in the turn in which it, you know, it arrives. So... Is rerolling the charge distance. If you reroll one of those dice, that's rerolling the charge distance because you're changing the charge distance. You're keeping one. Or does it mean you've rolled two dice? That is the charge distance. You have to reroll the whole distance. You can't reroll one. Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious on that one. Um, but yeah, that means it's quite likely they can get into combat on turn one. But then they only have three attacks, and it's kind of a bit mediocre. 
I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, only power point two, though, so I'm guessing they're cheap. Um, this is what I mean. They just need a little points value there. You can give them these upgrades to this this many points. You can say if it's worth it. Don't know why I haven't. It's going to make an absolute pain in the anus. A painus to look it up. Uh, Malaceptor is okay. Um, 12 wounds I like on a free up save. And T7. It's, that's, so he's tough, the Malaceptor. It's good to see. Uh, in terms of combat, he's a bit mediocre. Mo massive scything talents which aren't quite as good. Um, but then they do D6 damage, which is good. Uh, in fact, massive Scything Talons seem beast. What am I on about? Minus 3 to your save. In fact, a, a massive Scything Talons better than monstrous Scything Talons. Because I'd have thought m monstrous would be better, but... No, um, I think that from the looks of this, it seems like massive are better. Because it's minus 3 to your save as monstrous, but they do D6 damage instead of just 3, which is good. Um, Reroll World is a 1 when attacking this weapon. If it has 2 or more... Yeah, so it's pretty good. It's actually alright in combat. Only the three attacks or four of it's got two massive scything talons, which I think it doesn't. Does it only have one? I can't remember. Um, yeah, um, so that's pretty good. In terms of it, it can do... Is it one psychic power or two? Yeah, it can manifest one psychic power, so it's a psyker. It's a shadow in the warp and synapse. It's got a five pin bond save. So in terms of survivability, this is one of the most survivable. Twelve wounds, five pin bond, three up save, T7... Pretty survivable. Uh, it can also do Psychic Overload, which is his gimmick. So instead of manifesting any Psychic Powers in your Psychic Phase, the Mana Sector can unleash brain-bursting Psychic Tendrils. If it does so, roll a dice for each enemy unit within six uh, to a maximum number of units shown in the table. So it can do it to six units. Um, so if it's on full wounds... If it's got six units around it, which means you have to put it right in the centre of anything, but then it is very survivable. You roll a dice on a 2+, plus, it has a mortal wound. So, I don't know. I don't know how good that's going to be. Because you have to get in amongst them, and then it's only one mortal wound, so it's killing one guy if it's a regular squad. Mm, we, we shall see. We shall see. I'm not sure. I'm not entirely convinced by that guy, to be honest. He's okay. He's survivable. He seems like he'll be alright in combat with his massive scything talents, but he's not got many attacks. He's only hit on fours as well, so maybe not. Uh, the psychic overload, the fact it's only one mortal wound, it does happen on a two plus. Um, how close do you have to be? You have to be within six. So, how likely is he he's going to be within six inches of six different units? Don't know. We'll see. Zone Thropes. Uh, disappointing, to be honest. A little bit disappointed with them. Um, in terms of it, they've not changed too much in terms of stat line. Uh, they still have their free up in bond save, which is good. Um, but now they have to be in groups of three before you can take them as individuals or broods. So that's kind of disappointing. And really you want four for a couple of reasons. So um, you can also give them a... Um, what's his name? Yeah, a Neurothrope as an upgrade as well. So you can give them... Basically, free and a Neurothrope is what I think they want you to do. Because a unit contains a Neurothrope, regains D3 wounds lost early in the battle whenever it slays an enemy model with the Smite Psychic Power. That's good. It doesn't say that the Neurothrope regains D3. It just says the unit regains D3. So if you kill something with Smite, um, whenever it slays an enemy model with Smite, so you just kill two models, you can gain 2D3. You gain five models, you gain... 5d3 so you gain a lot of wounds which is good and in fact you've got a free up invon save uh, the fact they now have three wounds instead of two i think that's gone up so yeah i could see that being a very viable tactic of the neurothrope i don't like the fact you have to take them in squads of four because i mean they have to buy some new ones but oh well uh when this unit manifests a smite psychic power it inflicts d3 additional mortal wounds if this unit ha contains four or more models so encourage you to take four basically <sighs> The way I kind of see this this working is you take your Neurothrope, they've all got a free up in one save, you make it sort of one sort of big unit, um, and they float around, hitting things with smite, killing things, and regaining wounds, and just being survivable in the middle of the table. Um, Shadow and Orb and Synapse as well, so they're, they're kind of good to float around with your, your horde. A unit of zone ropes can attempt to manifest one psychic power in each friendly psychic phase, and attempt to deny one psychic power. power. A zone front unit with four or more models can attempt manifest two. 
Um, a zone throw unit, no smite, and one more psychic power from the hive mind. So you can, if you've got four in there, you can use your other power as well. When manifesting or denying a psychic power uh, with a zone throw unit, first select a model in the unit. Measure range, visibility, yada yada yada. Yeah, cool, fair enough. So they're okay, but the things and the reason I'm a bit disappointed is because I've only got two of them. I ran them as separate, and now you know they've lost their warp lance basically. But they've the spirit leech sounds good, and the the fact they've taken them in squads, you get squads of um, four or more. You're gonna get D three additional mortal wounds. So they can go around just mortal wounding things. They can use a bit of other powers. They're okay. Um, Venomthropes. Venomthropes, uh, stat line, who cares? They were never really meant for fighting. Um, yeah, they, they look the same as ever, hitting on fours. They've got lash whips for shooting now, um, which are like pistols. They've got... Um, they can use their toxic lashes in melee, which they could before. And Yeah, but they never really were for melee. They were for you know, shrouding your guys. Shrouding spores. Your opponent can subtract one from the hit rolls for ranged weapons that target uh, infantry units within... Three. Yeah, I'm disappointed with that. There was in six, but it's nerfed to three. So it's okay. I don't really see much of a place for them anymore because you put them in your middle. They're only only units within three inches, and it's um it is minus one to their rolls to hit, which is good, but it just sucks that it's three inches. If it was six, that'd make them you know, that's a big nerf to Venom Probes in my opinion. Um before it was shrouded, which was like, if they were intervening models, it was giving them like a three up cover save. Or it was night fight, it was like a two up cover save, which is awesome. Now it's minus one to their rolls to hit, which is good. You know, it makes space marines hit you on fours, which is cool. But only three inches. So I don't, not sure there's much of an incentive to take them as much as there was. Uh, Toxic Miasma is quite good though. At the end of a fight phase, roll a d6 for each enemy unit within one inch of any Venom probes. Uh, on a 5 plus it suffers a mortal wound so if you've got a couple of units around you there's a 1 in 3 chance and just suffer an extra wound which is fine it's good uh, pyrovores don't really want to talk about they're fine they're very cheap by the looks of it of a power rating of 2 um, for 1 pyrovore they have flamers which are good they've got some fun rules of acid blood and volatile which means they can explode in acid which is fun but don't look particularly great the Horror Specs looks good to me. He's T8 and 13 wounds with a 3-up save, so he's very, very survivable. Um, he's strength 7. He hits on 4s, which sucks. Um, and he's only got 4 attacks, which sucks. But the Grasping Tongue, uh, I really like, because it means that um, if he kills someone with his Grasping Tongue, he regains a wound, which is good. Um, he does quite a bit of damage. You know, He's got Shoveling Claws that are strength times 2, so he's really strong. Strength 14. Uh, they've stopped the limit for 10. You can be over that now. Minus 3 to save. Does D6 damage, which is good. Um, he's also got the Ravenous Maul, which is minus 1 to save. D3 damage. Make D3 hit rolls for each attack with this unit instead of 1. So you've got lots of things to attack. You want to use your your uh, Maul. If you're attacking something really tough, strength 14, um, which is good. You want to regain a wound. Use your Grasping Tongue. So, yeah, I think he's quite good, actually, in terms of his, his offensive stuff. Sucks that he's hitting on 4s, though. Oh, well. Uh, he's got Acid Blood, which, like I said, is quite fun. Uh, but then, this is what's good. Oh, yeah, Frenzied Death Throws, which is another thing. Basically, like, he explodes. He, as he dies, he whips around and hurts things around him. Which can be good if he's in the middle of an enemy, sort of, you know, big group of models. But if he's near with your guys, it's good. Uh, bad, rather. But this one is the other thing. Uh, the Hunger... Um, he each time a horror spec slays an enemy model with its ravenous maul, it immediately makes one extra attack with its shoveling claws. In addition, at the end of each fight phase in which the horror spec slew any model with its ravenous claw, it regains one wound. So this I really think is good. So this encourages you use your maul, um, and it, you'll have well four attacks, but each one of those attacks makes D three attacks every time. Um, you um, slay an enemy, you get an extra attack at strength 14, AP 3, D6 damage. So that that's really good. It gives him a lot of attacks, even though you are hitting on 4s. Also, I like the fact you can regain a wound with the Grasping Tongue, uh, which is 12 inches Assault 1, strength 6. So you can use that. And you can also regain a wound with your, um, you know, each time you kill something with, um, with your Maw, Ravenous Maw. So... It means that you're wound 13, but you can keep regaining wounds. Regain, you know, 
multiple wounds each turn with your grasping tongue and you know this special rule and it gives you a lot of attacks because each attack does you know you can get d3 um make d3 hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon instead of one so potentially if you get a three for each of them that triples your attack characteristic to 12 12 attacks hitting on fours admittedly but yeah i think he's got some potential Death Leaper, don't want to talk about too much. I love Death Leaper. I take him. His stat line, he's slightly more pumped up than a regular Lipter, I believe. Although, looking at it, I actually can't see how he is better. I think that looks... Oh, he's got six wounds, which is good. Um, he's got superior comedian skin, which is minus two for their hit roll. So, Space Marines are hitting you on fives, which is good. Uh, instead, he gets... And he also gets two to a saving throw. So, again, if he's in ruins, he's going to get a free up save. And they're rolling fives to hit him. Uh, he's got It's After Me, which is the same um, as, you know, deploying him nine inches away. Um, oh, wait, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Um, you can set him up six inches from an enemy character. So he's quite good at popping a little character, you know. That enemy character, you can bring him in, um, charge him in, try and take him out with his rending claws. Yeah, it's okay. The red... Terror, I don't want to talk about. Shrikes are good. Shrikes have gotten better. They move 12. They're Tyranid Warriors that move 12. But now instead of a 5-up save, they have a 4-up save, which is great. Um, Raveners, I don't really want to talk about. I've never really liked Raveners. Um, Raveners and the Red Terror. The re Well, the Red Terror is a, like a character Ravener, which is why I don't take because I don't really like Raveners. Raveners, the problem I have them is a 5-up save. However, 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 we'll talk about them briefly... Because I have death from below. During the opponent, you can set them up nine inches away. It's the same rule. Why don't they just make it a universal rule? They can set up nine inches away from enemy model, but they can also assault. So now you have a chance of getting a first turn assault off. They're actually pretty good. Um, because before, the problem with Raveners was you'd set them up. Um, they would come in by deep strike. They would stand there looking stupidly. The enemy would shoot them repeatedly in the face. They would all die because they had a five-up save. Now at least you have a chance of getting a first turn assault off. Uh, so yeah, my apologies uh, about that. I just had to change the battery there. It's been quite a long review, as you can probably tell. Um, so Sk Sky Slasher Swarms, not really going to talk about them. They don't really interest me. They're Flying Ripper Swarms, same as they were before, I can tell. Um, swarms in general, I've never used Ripper Swarms at all. They don't really appeal to me. Um, <clears throat> so I can't really comment on them. Let me know if they're any good in the comments. Um, Gargoyles are a funny one. Um... Seem basically the same as ever. 12 inch move, like jump infantry um, used to be. Um, they have a flesh bore. They have blinding weapon. Venom, which is if a unit suffers any unsaved wounds from this weapon, your opponent must subtract one from the hit rolls until the end of the turn. So that's good. So, you know, um, they make them, you know, <laughs> they suffer any. And it's not that they have to roll for it or take an initiative check or anything. They just minus one to their rolls to hit. So. That's cool. Um, all models in the unit may have toxin sacks. Yep, fair enough. Um, if they've got 20 or more reroll, rolls of one when it shoots, fair enough. Gargoyles, they seem alright. Again, points cost, if they're really cheap, they might seem to be a good option. If they're expensive, not so much. Harpy and Hive Crone, I never used to take, purely for the reason that um, they were 4-up save, T7, and like not that many wounds, and something like a um, uh, quad gun would just chew through them like that. Now, they've gotten better and worse as far as I can see. So my problem with them was their survivability. Um, in terms of survivability, they're now 12 wounds, which is mad. That's more than a hive tyrant. So really good. They still only have a 4-up save in T6, but I think T6 is still buff as well. I think they're, Yeah, they were only like T5 before, I think. Um, so uh, they might have been T6 actually, but yeah, they weren't particularly strong anyway. Uh, but yeah, 12 wounds, um, T6, only a 4-up save still, but yeah, at the same time, those 12 wounds will really help out. However, they're not flyers anymore. Like, fl they don't have, you know, supersonic or the hard-to-hit rule or anything like that. So the enemy can just fire at them just like anything. Um, they can now assault, but they're not particularly amazing in the assault. Three attacks for the harpy. Only uh, four attacks for the hive crone. The hive crone is better than the assault because it's got scythed, scything wings, um, which are D3 damage. Reroll ones to hit when attacking with this weapon. Um, in terms of their offensive capability, um, 
Harpy are quite like the Sonic Screech, which means that if it charges into combat, um, enemy units in one cannot choose to fight until all other enemy units have done so. So I suppose there's a knockdown, drag out brawl going on between your warriors and a big unit of Death Company. Fly this guy in, and they don't get to attack. And you know your your guys will get to go first. You know this is providing it's you know a couple of turns in to you know a long drawn out combat. And basically makes it like as though your guys have charged again so they get to, to hit first. Harpy can drop Spore Mines. Uh, you can give it two Venom Cannons, which will give it D 2d3 shots. Um, cool. And Strength 9 minus 1 to your save, and it does D3 damage per wound. So that's that's good. Um, or you can give it two Stranglethorn Cannons, which is 2 damage, Strength 7, minus 1 to your save. Uh, assault d6 so 2d6 shots you can add one to your hit rolls from this weapon when attacking units of 10 or more models so I encourage you to go after the full squads it doesn't necessarily mean hordes you know 10 tactical marines uh, one to your hit rolls which means you're hitting on threes which is one of the bad things I don't like about these guys both of them where weapon and ballistic skill hit on fours both which is kind of lame um, Hive Cronus, the draw cannon, which hits automatically, but it's only strength 6, minus 1 to your save, 1 damage, and it's um, only 8 inch range, assault d6. In terms of their movement, they can go between 10 and 30, which does make them rapido. So, yeah, I never really took them before, never really, don't really see much reason to get them now, so, yeah. Then you've got, um, uh, M M two you got spore mines and M M called id spores or something um so yeah two different types of spores uh profiles they look the same except that they are wound and toughness toughness free for the other type of spores that i failed to pronounce uh, other than that i think they're the same i think these the other ones are just slightly tougher better spores um, from what i can see i can't see any difference in there I can't see any difference in their rules. Or the only thing is that their T three free wounds, and they only they have a six up save, whereas the regular spore mines they have a seven up save. So if they're in cover, they'll get a six up. Um, Tyrannosite drop pods, same as ever. Um, now this is an interesting one. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it. My th my thinking is that I think that potentially I'd put it to you that I think that perhaps um, Tyrannosites the the, the spore pods, basically, uh, I think that they have gotten slightly worse by virtue of the fact that Tyranids are now much better at getting across the field. Tyranids now are, are quicker. Most Tyranid, you know, like stuff like Gene Stealers and Hormagaunts move eight. Hive Tyrants, Lictors can move nine. You've got Gene Stealers can advance and assault. You can give wings to Hive Tyrants, have them just move, uh, what was it, like 16 inches and then assault. Um, so needing that, that for, even st slow stuff like Carnifex is, they move seven. So needing that, that Tyrannocyte to drop you, you know, uh, drop you behind enemy lines, um, perhaps not as vital now as it was. However, what I would say is that they're still really good. You know, having that ability to take... Uh, a unit and the fact you can now sort out of it all vehicles are assault vehicles still really good but i would say that perhaps not as vital as perhaps they have been in certain competitive tyrannous tyranny builds but yeah the ability to um drop nine inches away from an enemy model disembark tw you know up to 20 whatever you like um and then you know they can potentially get off an assault seems pretty good um and yeah i definitely still see a place for them not too sure about their points, though. Drop pods have gone hideously expensive, which tells me they might have seen a, a big increase as well. Carnifexes. I love Carnifexes. Carnifexes are one of my favourite, um, but um, let's see. Um, so they now move seven, which is good. Still hitting on fours in combat, which is what they did most of the time because they were blip weapon skill free. So, yeah. Hit on four, same as before. Strength six, massive nerf. They used to be strength nine. Uh, T7, which is better. 8 wounds, which is better. You know, only had 4 before. But again, everything's seen an increase in wounds. Only 4 attacks, which kind of sucks. Leadership, 6. But I'm not really too bothered about leaderships because of synapse. And a 3 up save. Um, they contain um, 2 pairs of monstrous scything talons. As we've discussed, monstrous scything talons are 
beast. Um, but you could also... Oh, and a thresher scythe. Um, which is strength for a minus one to your save, damage one. Make D3 hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon instead of one. So if you're against like a really lame, rubbish swarm, like a swarm of like gaunts, if you're up fighting other Tyranids or, you know, guardsmen, you can do that and then you'll get D3 times four attacks. So you'll get maximum 12 attacks, you know, minus one to your save, strength four. So against really rubbish troops, that could be an option. Against most things, you're going to want to use your monstrous um, monstrous scything talons, um, which, yeah, they're good. We've talked about them before. Um, and the fact that you've got two pairs means you'll get five attacks. Um, I quite like monstrous crushing claws. Their strength times two should be strength 12, which is good. Other than that, minus three to your save, three damage. Um, they do slow you down, though, but strength 12 not to be sniffed at. So, yeah, in terms of it, I don't think they've got particularly better or worse. I have to check points, costs. You also, um, the way it works now is you can take them as a brood. They're deployed within six of each other to start with. Then they can just move off and be separate units, which is good. Because it means you don't have to use, like, instead of just getting rid of broods entirely, they're now no longer a brood, but you can still take six as one, sorry, three as one slot. As long as you deploy them within six of each other and then they're good to go. Um, when a Khan effect finishes a charge move, roll a dice on a 4+, plus. the enemy unit um, suffers a mortal wound for living battering ram. That's alright. Um, just on a 4+, plus, 50-50 chance, mortal wound. That's okay. Um, so yeah, a little bit underwhelming. Um, they can, you can upgrade them um, with various things. Um, but yeah, they're, they're okay. I'm not particularly there's there's nothing about the Khan effects that's like oh my god what a combination i can see that being really good well you know it's got that unique thing to it it's just kind of like they're just a sort of generic all right monstrous creature um i used to run my my Khan effects with twinling devourers but now they've been nerfed so i'm not really sure uh, i'll have a look at the, the st i'll have a play around when i look at the equipment list biovores they look okay uh, generic stat line not very good um they have Spore Mine Launcher, which is heavy one, launch Spore Mines. They can throw Spore Mines at the enemy. Pretty handy. Pretty handy. Um, you've got a Trigon Prime, which is basically the same as a Trigon, uh, but it's a Synapse Creature, Shadow in the Warp, and it has, I think it has slightly better stat line, but um, we'll talk about the Trigon, which is what I take. So Trigons, um, I think, have gotten better, and this is one of the units that gets me really excited. I think they're going to become... An auto include for me. So for a start, they move nine now, which is awesome. I just love the fact that going nine inches is such a for your move, and then getting you know uh, potentially two d well two d six charge on top of that makes them so much more flexible and so much more quick. Uh, weapon skill they're hitting on threes, um, which is pretty good. Um, ballistic skill four, well like hitting on fours, but who really cares? Um, their shooting is all right, but not particularly much to write home about. But that's never been there their thing they have three pairs of massive scything talons which as we've talked about massive scything talons are good so minus three to your save they do d6 damage um they get an additional attack you can reroll ones um they have um six attacks which is awesome so they're getting seven attacks re-rolling ones d6 that like just really really good in combat um in terms of their survivability as well really survivable They've got 12 wounds, which is awesome. Really, really, really good. 12 wounds, T6, free up save. Compared to the Khan effects, only 8 wounds. I know the Khan effects is T7, but even so. Um, so, yeah, lots and lots of wounds. More than a Hive Tyrant, more than a, you know, which they had before, to be fair. But, yeah, really survivable. Um, and what else have we got? Yeah, so uh, Instinctive Behaviour and Death Rose, we've talked about before. Yeah. Um, but a subterranean assault basically means they burrow up nine inches away. But what's really good is it leaves a hole and you can bring up uh, other Tyranid infantry units. So during your deployment, you set up underground, blah, 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 blah. Troops units uh, in... Um, you can set up a troops unit in the tunnel. At the end of your movement phase, set up the Trigon anywhere on the field that is more than nine inches away from enemy models. If there is another unit in the tier at Trigon's tunnel, set it up at the same time, hold within three of the Trigon, and more than nine away from any model. Any model that you cannot place in this way are destroyed. So you don't get to like 
just you don't have to well you don't have to roll for reserves now which is great but you don't like it's not a case of you can bring up multiple units through a tunnel you choose one unit and say that's with the trigon and then bring up the trigon and you can have it with it so you can bring up the trigon uh, and then take a unit of gene stealers and have that be nine inches away and bear in mind you know you need an eight inch charge and they can all get into combat on the first turn i think trigons are awesome i think um, they look brilliant. They're one of the best looking Tyranid models. I think they're survivable. I think they're good in close combat from what I can see. You can bring them up nine inches away and they can get a charge. If you want, you can take something with them. So basically, they're kind of like taking the uh, the Tyrannocyte, the, the drop pod. But you you know, you get a, a unit. It just says you can set up a trial underground instead of, you know, so you can set up a troops unit. So it has to be troops. So gene stealers or um, maybe... Um, Hormagaunts if you wanted, but yeah, I think that's. I'm definitely, I'm definitely feeling Gene Stealers combined with Trigon. Bring them up, try and get an assault off. If you don't trust in the Trigon's toughness and wounds and hardiness, trust in the Gene Stealers in Von Save. Brave a turn, you know, move nine inches with the Trigon. They're not going to escape it. Move eight inches with the Gene Stealers. You'll get definitely get a charge off turn two, um, if not. Morlock, um, not really interested in the Morlock. The Morlock used to be uh, quite a good option, um, but I never really personally took him. Um, but let's discuss him anyway. Actually, having looked at it for a second, having read the rule, Morlock sucks a little bit. Like, so Morlock, his gimmick was he was in the last book, he was absolutely rubbish, absolutely useless in close combat. Um, all he had was his terror from the deep, bringing up his sort of large blast, strength six, AP two, just, you know, like deep strike onto things. Now he's still rubbish in combat. He still hits on four. So half of his attacks are going to miss. He's survivable. Sure. Same survivability as a, a Trigon, 12 wounds for up save, which is really good. T six. Um, but he's only strength six. So he's weaker than a Trigon. Um, he has... In fairness, eight attacks. I did not see that. <laughs> that is drastically better. So, yeah, fair enough, actually. Um, he's got some interesting weapons. He's got Scything Talons, which kind of suck a little bit. Um, but, hey, he's got eight attacks. But then you'll probably miss with half of them. So, in combat, he's a bit mediocre. Fair enough. I didn't see eight attacks. That actually took me by surprise. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's okay in combat. He's got um, the tail and the jaw... Both of which are just... Uh, his weapons aren't particularly much to write home about, but he has got eight attacks, but then he hits on four. So, in combat, shrug, he's okay. Um, he has death throws, instinctive behaviour, like, yeah, nothing to write home about. His terror from the deep, though, I think has got significantly worse. How it used to be was you put a large blast over a unit, everything in it took a strength six AP2 hit. If it wasn't completely dead, they took it again, and then he appeared where, you know, in the gap that it was. Uh, now, he appears one inch away... Um, and six away from other Morlocks. It's not that you can take three of them and have them all pop up around one unit. Um, then roll a d6 for each enemy unit within two of it. On a one, the unit escapes unharmed. On a two to three, it suffers one mortal wound. On a five or, or four or five, it suffers d3 mortal wounds. On a six, it suffers three mortal wounds. The Morlock cannot charge in the same turn. So, let's get this straight. You bring it up... And best case scenario, on a 6, it takes 3 mortal wounds. On a D3, it takes 3... Uh, sorry, on a 4 or 5, it takes D3. And on a 1 or a 2, it suffers 1. And on a 1, it doesn't even do any damage. That seems a bit... A bit rubbish to me. I mean, I guess the sort of strength of it is that now characters aren't part of the units. You can bring them up next to, you know, a unit that's got two characters near it. And all of them should take... Because you're not targeting them. I'd assume all of them would take the mortal wounds. So it could be a way of popping characters around the unit. I could see that being a way. But if you think about it. If you pop it up next to a unit of Space Marines. Best case scenario. Absolute best case scenario. On a 6 you only do 3. Um, 3 of them dead basically. I suppose it would get something like Terminators. Because you bypass their invulnerable save. But to me it just seems a bit weak. And then it's got Burrow. Which is the beginning of your movement phase. Uh, remove it from the battlefield, it can return as described from the Terror of the Deep ability. So you can do it again, but like I said, just for me, the maximum free free unsavable wounds doesn't seem like that much for me. Um, and then in combat, yeah, it's better than useless now, because it's got 8 attacks, but um, 
weapon skill is rubbish, so you're hitting, you're only hitting half of them most of the time. Um, it's weaponry, yeah, you've got the jaw that does d6 damage, but strength user is only strength 6, so it's not like, you know, strength times 2 really scary. None of them have any AP, so against something like a, um, a really tough, you know, armor save 2 thing. So Morlock, um, his one saving grace might be his cheapness, that was definitely one of the advantages of the Morlock in the old book. Uh, in the old book, they were only 120 points, I want to say, I feel like I want to say 120 um, let's have a look. Let's have a look, shall we? No, I said I wouldn't look up, because this is what I have to do. I have to flick to the back to find out his points value. This is why I was, you know, um, so reluctant to do that. Uh, what was, what was I looking at? I was looking at Morlock. Morlock is, he's only 104 points. That doesn't include war gear. And then you will have to factor in his war gear. So, uh, what's his war gear? He's got, uh, dispensable jaw... Uh, pincer tail, three pairs of scything talons. Um, why can I not find these melee weapons? See, there, why is there no monstrous one? Anyone, is it just, it just has the, yeah, so like, is it because it has it in back, uh, bra uh, brackets afterwards? Is that why? So scything talons are free, so you doesn't have to pay for those. His jaw is free, and what was the other thing? The tail. Um, see, this is this is what I'd have to do every single time I want to talk about points values. Um, one point. So literally, he is, as far as I can tell, like 105 points, which is pretty good. So yeah, that is sort of the saving grace of the Morlock. 105 points, you can bring him in, do those wounds. It seems to make it worthwhile. So this is one of the inherent problems of review. It would take me ages to look up the points value for each one. Because um, I have to keep flicking to the back and then adding the equipment and then working out, well, if you add this equipment, it'd be more expensive. And where's that equipment? You know, it's... it's um, But at the same time, certain things like this guy on paper doesn't look very good. Then you hear he's only 100 points. You're like, actually, maybe he's all right. Um, but then we don't know how other points have changed in other codexes. So actually, maybe 100 points isn't good value anymore. Maybe 300 is good value. <laughs> I don't know, you know. Uh, we're all at sea because it's a new edition. But yeah, let me know because it definitely says on a lot of these things it may take stuff from the monstrous bio weapons or monstrous bio melee weapons. And then if you flick to the back, it just says weapons. But then I notice on some of them it says scything tal talons, brackets, hive tyrant, or brackets, morlock, or whatever. Um, is that how you tell what you can upgrade it with? Let me know in the comments. Exocrine. When I looked at the Exocrine, I was like, he looks rubbish now. And I looked a bit closer and realised he's actually a bit of a monster. So... In terms of his stat line, hitting on threes, hitting on fours, and weapon and weapon ballistic, not great. Only got three attacks, not great. Toughness eight, twelve wounds for up save, pretty good, pretty solid. Um, in terms of his weapon, I read it and I was like, oh, and in combat as well, he's um, uh, powerful limbs, minus two to save, two damage, but only three attacks, so eh, he's okay. But his bioplasma cannon, I looked at it and I was like, oh, what? It's only six shots. Uh, what's that all about? You know, because it's still the same sort of plasma profile. Strength 7, minus 3 to your save, which is good. 2 damage, good. So, you know, if all, if all 12 wounds, you can do 12 damage something, which is good. Sorry, if all 6 wounds, you can do 12 damage something. But it's like, only the 6 shots. I mean, what, you know, his big cannon could take out a lot of people. However, 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 he has. If this model does not move in the movement phase, you can add 1 to his hit rolls. In the following shooting phase, if you do so, it cannot charge the same turn, which makes him ballistic skill free, which is great because before six shots, um, missing with half of them, but now it's ballistic skill free. And also, weapon beast if this model does not move in your movement phase, it can shoot all its weapons twice in your shooting phase. Awesome! So that becomes heavy 12. So if you just, um, if you if you keep him still in your movement phase, he gets 12 shots, but hitting on fours, um, if he don't move him again because it was the previous turn. You can also the next turn it'll be hitting on threes. So this guy basically move him up. You know it's got thirty six inch range, which isn't bad, and he can move six. So probably move him up and advance him on the first turn. Rest of the battle just sat there. He's T eight. He's got twelve wounds. He's got three up save. He's quite survivable. Sit him there. Ballistic skill three for days. Twelve shots. You know plasma. Really good. So pretty happy with him actually. Tyrann effects. Uh, I've never taken a Tyrann effect, so I'm not really too um, too sure about him. 
Um, I know he. I think he was a two up save before he doesn't now. Um, he also doesn't. He doesn't have much in the way of um, weapons to start with. I think it's basically what you upgrade him with. Because it said he's armed with acid spray and powerful limbs. And he's also got stinger salvo. Powerful limbs are pretty mediocre. Um, he is survival with 14 wounds T8. Which is good. I think it's more about giving him a rupture cannon or something. Um, yeah, you can give him a, fl uh, a flesh bore a hive or a rupture cannon. Flesh bore a hive is heavy. So 20 shots, strength 5. But then he does hit on 4s. So, yeah. Um... Rupture cannon, strength 10, minus 1 to your save. Uh, if this weapon hits, the AP of the attack is... Sorry. If both of this weapon's shot hit... Oh, so it's heavy 2. Two, two, two shots, strength 10, 2 damage. Mm, so it's got good strength on it. I, I'm not seeing much here. I do like the fact that he is bio-tank. Um, this model does not suffer the penalty to hit for moving and firing heavy weapons. So you can move him and fire him, which is good. And he also has Weapon Beast. If this model does not move in your movement phase, you can shoot all its weapons twice. So you can potentially get four strength 10 shots, which do two damage each. Or you can get 40, 40 shots with the uh, Flesh Borer Hive. So I think that's how he's going to be used. Uh, and he's a bit of a beast as well with 14 wounds. But shame he's not got a two-up save. Uh, Toxicrine I've never taken. Um, not really so 12 wounds is good free up save t7 that all looks good um weapon and ballistic skill four though which kind of sucks he's got six attacks which is good um he's got a ton of weapons which are all sort of toxic related um and he's got yeah so basically he's just essentially that he doesn't really have much of a gimmick as far as i can see he's just got um toxic weapons which i won't read because i'll be here all day and this video's gone on long enough uh, and, you know, most of his stuff, it's not like he buffs anything or does anything fancy. He's just in there to go and fight and kill things. So, yeah. Um, Spore Cyst, um, not sure what this is. Never really seen this before. So I'll skip that. And that is it. That is the entire thing. So I will wrap up the video here. Um, I know it's been a long one, but it was a lot to cover. Essentially, I think Tyranids have gotten a lot better in this edition. Um, I've seen uh, improvements basically across the board. Um, I do have to sit down, look at the points values, look at the points values for the weapons, um, see how they've improved. But yeah, I'm seeing a lot of quick moving stuff. I'm seeing a lot of re-rolling ones. I'm seeing a lot of, um, you know, like scary things like Hive Tyrants, um, you know, like the way I'm sort of seeing my, my envisioning my list was before I was sort of running uh, groups of guys with venom probes in the middle. Now I'm just thinking about making it quick, making it quick. You know, making gene stealers trying to leverage that moving eight, advancing and assaulting, just trying to get up there as quick as possible. Having those flying creatures, you know, just try and get in their face as quick as we can. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Let me know what you think in the comments. And also, if you could comment on this video, let me know what you would like to see me review next. Would you like to see me do Blood Angels next? Would you like to see me do Imperial Guard next? Would you like to see me do Orcs next? Let me know. Uh, or any of the... I've got all of the the um, books now, so I could do Gene Stealer Cults. Let me know. Let me know what you want to see. Um, I will end the video here, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.